Magandang hapon po mga kababayan. Kayo'y nakikinig dito lamang sa Radyo Migrante. Ako po si Waynes, kasama niyo sa kwentuhan at kulitan, pati na rin sa pagselbisyo sa bayan. Ang tema ng ating episode today ay Asian Heritage Month. Dahil ang buwan ng Mayo ay ang official na buwan ng pagkalinga sa mga mayabong na kontribusyon ng mga Asian communities, pati na rin sa pagdiriwang sa mayamang magkakaibang kultura ng mga Asian. Magandang araw! Ako si Jules. Kung nasa break time man o nagkakape at nagpapahinga sa bahay, hello po sa ating mga manggagawa na natikinig ngayong hapon. Magandang hapon ulit sa ating mga listeners all over the world. Maraming salamat sa pagsubaybay sa aming discussion at kukulitan. Shoutout sa mga listeners natin tulad ni Bayani and family. Ako muli po si Ems. Samahan niyo kami sa ating episode 12 ngayong May 28, 2023 para sa mga usaping nakasentro sa karanasan ng mga asyanong komunidad dito sa Canada. Follow niyo na rin kami sa Instagram at Facebook. Hanapin lang ang Radyo Migrante Toronto at kung gusto niyong pakinggan ang mga dating episode, bisitahin lang ang aming YouTube account. Excited na ba kayo para sa episode na ito? Mapakikinggan natin ang top 3 news, Filipino word of the day, at magbabay tayo sa isang hit na kanta ni Kim Morgan. At hindi lang yan, andyan din ang pulso ng mga migrante. At pagkatapos ng break natin, pakinggan natin muli ang part 2 ng mga kwento nila Kuya Javier at Kaira tungkol sa kanilang karanasan bilang international students. And don't miss out on upcoming events of our community. Exciting talaga ang ating episode. So, simulan na natin. Para sa ating top 3 news this week, para sa unang balita, mula sa report ng Radio Canada International, Jolly is in the Philippines to advance trade, defense, and justice. Nagtungo sa Pilipinas si Canadian Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolly para sa tatlong araw na pagbisita sa naglalayong palawaking daw ang ugnayan ng Pilipinas at Canada sa larangan ng trade, investment, education, agriculture at defense. Si Minister Jolly ay nakipagpulong kay Philippine National Security Advisor Eduardo Año para daw i-reaffirm ang uh, suporta ng Canada para sa regional security ng West Philippine Sea. Oo, at lahat nga ito ay kabahagi sa isinusulong na pagpapatupad ng Indo-Pacific Strategy ng Canada sa Pilipinas. Ano nga ba ang objective nitong Indo-Pacific Strategy? Actually, marami siya, pero none of them are actually for the benefit of the Filipino people. Ang pangunahing layunin kasi nitong Indo-Pacific Strategy ay para protektahan ang mga interest ng Canada. It's giving, ano, very double caravan. Tama, and although it seems like maraming maitutulong ang Canada sa Pilipinas, makikita natin na ang tunay na kulay nitong mga plano nila dahil sa kahit na sinasabi nilang ito ay para sa peace, resilience, and defense strategy, um, ang tunay na interest talaga is to profit off of overseas. Kagaya pag sa pagbebenta nila ng armas sa war industry, pag-build nila ng military capacity, at higit pa, alam natin na uh, jo- uh, Jolly met with uh, Eduardo Año, yan ang Vice President din ng National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict or NTFLK sa Pilipinas. At alam natin na ang task force na ito, uh, sinasabi na they quote and quote uh, aims to end terrorism sa Pilipinas. Uh, but often, critics and journalists report na ang task force na ito ay, is just used to target and falsely accuse activists farmers, journalists, and critics as terrorists. And, you know, we have to ask, how can Canada easily dismiss its own principles of human of being a human rights advocate when they continue to invest in, this arms, in, the, in the arms industry and they continue to support security forces that repress democracy and its people? At para naman sa pangalawang balita, from Inquirer News, Court acquits 43 Kidapawan farmers tagged in assaulting cops in 2016 rally. Noong March 2016, 6,000 na Kidapawan farmers ang nag at nag-block ng Cotabato Dabao Highway para magdemanda ng tulong para sa mga naapektuhan ng, na- ng tagtuyot. Nagkagulo sa protesta noon noong 2016 at nagresulta sa dalawang patay at 116 na sugatan. Sa 61 na binintangan ng polis, 43 sa kanila ang nakasuhan with direct assault. As of three days ago, 
the local court acquitted the cases dahil sa kakulangan ng ebidensya at kakulangan ng konkretong, konkretong statements from the witnesses. Pangatlo at huling balita naman, from CP24. Olivia Chow leads but Anna Bailao may be closing gap in Toronto mayoral race. Sinusundan niyo ba ang mayoral race, mga Mars? Oo. Um, actually, the one thing that in sinusubaybayan ko is actually what are the concerns ng mga tao according to um, one of the articles I've read in the Toronto Star that there's an increase of 25% of renters in the city um, versus a decreasing amount of household owners. So makikita natin that the voting powers, the voting powers of renters ay lumalawak and we should recognize that. Patuloy po kayong nakikinig sa Radyo Migrante dito sa Toronto's Best Filipino Community Program Vibe 105. Natungayan po ninyo ang mga balita at ngayon naman, magbalik tanaw tayo sa kasaysayan at kultura ng Pilipinas. Pakinggan po natin. Hello everyone, my name is Jules and welcome to Filipino Word of the Week where we will share a new Filipino word each week from different languages in the Philippines. Did you know, in the Philippines, there are approximately 130 Philippine languages as validated by the Commission sa Wikang Filipino. The main languages include Tagalog, Cebuano, Ilocano, Hiligaynon, Waray, Bicol, and many, many more. For this week, we bring to you the Tagalog word, Asiano, meaning Asian. Let's use it in a sentence. Ang aking mga ninuno ay Asiano. Yan. At baka pwede nating... Ano nga ba ang mga kinakaharap na problema ng mga Asyano like you and me? Let's use it again in a sentence. <clears throat> Palaging nakasukbit ang mga pangsistemang problema sa mga Asyano. Ayan, pak ang lalim. Salamat, Jules. Um, siguro ako, yung sentence na gagamitin ko today is ang kontribisyon ng mga migranteng Asyano sa Canada ay nagsimula nang mag-migrate mula pa noong 1858 during the gold rush. Gold rush. So just as a history fact, dito natin nakikita ang usbong ng ating bansa ay hindi pwede mangyari kung wala ang mga migrante. And we want to recognize that even during the labor short- shortages of um, the colonial system sa Canada, they actually have forced um, labor and relied on Chinese contractors to recruit Chinese workers and laborers from China to work on to work in Canada. Ganda naman ang sentence mo, Ems. And I feel like yung yung reason, di ba, nung umpisang uh, pag forced migration ng mga Asia, no, to Canada. Same, same pa rin naman siya hanggang ngayon. Uh, so, konektado rin sa sentence ni Jules na kung saan ang mga kinakaharap ng mga Asia no dito rin sa Canada ay eh, karanas ka, ka, ang karamihang mga uh, migrant workers na nagmula pa sa mga uh, bansa sa Asia no Asia nung bansa ay uh, may mga kinakaharap no sa kanilang uh, sa mga exploitation exploitation sa kanilang trabaho so connected din sa aking uh, sentence para sa word of the day ang sentence ko ay Tumaas ang bilang ng mga kriming dulot ng puot sa mga Asyano simula noong 2021. Uh, so, yun yung unang pumasok sa utak ko kasi hanggang ngayon ang anti-Asian uh, hate crimes no dito sa Toronto. So, sa Canada, talaga tumataas pa rin. Alam nga natin na noong um, ayon sa Chinese Canadian National Council, nung nag, uh, umaabot ng 1,150 racist attacks towards East and South Asian uh, Southeast Asian in Canada noong March 2020 hanggang Mar- February 2021 yan ang na-reporta pero pag-iisipan rin natin na ang anti uh, alam mo anti-Asian hate or anti-Asian violence hindi lang siya yung mga talagang physical or uh, emotional na atake pati na rin ng mga systemic no systemic violence towards um, Asians Tama. And so, kung binilang natin yun, what will the number be? Is it more than uh, what 1,000, di ba? Kasi kung physical attacks lang and verbal, not including was what you said, I wonder what that number looks like now. Meron naman akong good sentence para sa ating Filipino word of the, of the week. At yan ay, napakayaman ng kultura ng mga Asian. Baka meron pang pwedeng inagdag, eh, ano masasabi mo dyan? 
parang pinilit mo ako magdagdag. <laughs> Hindi naman. <laughs> Joke lang. Pero totoo, I think we should celebrate talaga, you know, this day and age, ang growing representation ng Filipinos in media and our society. Tulad sa Sesame Street, may bagong character tulad ni TJ. Uh, meron din sa PBS, bagong cartoon car- uh, cartoon show actually, na tawag ay Jelly, Ben, and Pogo is a whole Filipino family. At storya nila... Um, as a family and with their with their pet dinosaur. So ang galing. And last but not least, um out in theaters right now, in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, nandun si Nico Santos, um which is great representation we see of Filipino actors um making us all proud bilang mga Pilipino. At uh, alalahanin din natin na ang ating mga Pilipinong manggagawa patuloy na lumalaban para sa nakabubuhay na sahod dito sa Canada ay talaga nagko-contribute yan para sa lahat ng manggagawa, di ba, dito sa Canada. Eh. So, happy Asian Heritage Month! Tama. Oo. At ang kit naman ng PBS cartoon, meron silang dinosaur. Papanood <laughs> din ko yan. Salamat ulit sa pakiginig, mga kababayan. Join us again next week to learn another Filipino word. Talagang mag-tune in ang mga kababayan natin sa segment na yan dahil sa it's a really good way to expand our vocabulary. Maraming salamat, Jules. At para sa susunod na segment, lumubog tayo sa ating kulturang Pilipino. Maraming salamat, Waynes. Uh, ngayon naman, para sa kulturang Pilipino, ako si Ems. Nais nyo bang makadiskubre ng mga makabuluhang kanta at tula mula sa iba't ibang musikero at makata? Ang segment na ito ay magsisilbing espasyo para sa iba't ibang pagtatanghal ng mga talento ng ating kababayang Pilipino. So for this week, ang feature performance break natin is from the West Coast all the way in Vancouver, BC, si Kim Mortal. Kim Mortal is a queer non-binary Philippine ex multi-hyphenate artist combining their passion for hip-hop, visual art, theater, spoken word, ancestral wisdom, and liberation. Si Kim Mortal strives to build worlds that make queer and diasporic weird kids feel like they belong. And our song that we will feature by Kim Mortal today is Sad Femme Club. Sad Femme Club is an ode to femme, the Filipino community, and anyone who has ever felt not enough, or felt rage, felt silence, or felt hate from the systemic powers of violence of patriarchy, racism, colonization, and imperialism. The message is simple. Enough ka, you are enough, take up your space, and that the feeling, I, the feelings of anger towards the systems of oppression are valid and justified. So, tara, let's pakinggan na natin ang Sad Femme Club by Kim Mortal. Will I just be dismissed? Welcome to the Sad Femme Club, baby, you are enough, hey! Like the holy ink to sink a patriarchy Popping eagles like balloons Cause we don't exist for you Burn your eyes with tiger bombs Don't try to tell her to be calm Colonial repercussions Any questions? CC the boss Oh, she's the boss Expert of self, they pray to moon She raps and spells I'm attuned to what you're numb to Check my mood ring Did I ask you? No I prefer my make-believe to their bull I work within it But at the end of shift I build spectrums on the internet I Attack Cause I'm an empath Foundations Philippinex No limits on how I choose to express With my pixels and my queerness You can't hold me back If I lose my right now Will I just be dismissed right now? If I lose my right now Will I just be dismissed right now? Will I just be dismissed? Welcome to the sad fan club Baby, you are enough Hey! Grabe, oh. Ano, Wayne's Jules? Ano masasabi nyo sa song ni Kim Mortal? Mm. Ang favorite part ano? ko, yung sinasabi niya na, 
Because you're never not fighting a racist system that keeps powers in place. And I was just like, Grabe, araw, araw. That is true. Like, you're never not fighting it. Because every day, nararanasan ng mga Asyano, nararanasan ng mga Pilipino, uh, dahil lagi tayong subjected dun sa systematicong violensya ng kapitalistang US at ng Canada. Tulad na lang, you know, example, ha, yung mga migrant workers dito sa Canada. Marami ang nakakaranas ng exploitation sa trabaho, sa housing, sa gastusin, sa immigration, at dun sa part na, tas connected siya dun sa susunod na sentence na sabi niya, they fail to acknowledge the root of your pain. And it's so true. Dahil imbis na pagpaparami ng trabaho sa Pilipinas para hindi na mapuwersa ang umalis yung mga, yung, mga, yung mga Pilipino at magtrabaho sa ibang bansa, mas, pinapala, mas pinapalala pa nila actually yung commodification ng mga Pilipinong uh, manggagawa at mas pinapausbong pa nila yung sa pilitang migrasyon sa ibang bansa. Grabe, Wins. Wala na ako. Ems, anong, anong likes mo? Anong oh my goodness. I think lahat. <laughs> Pero I think, I think talagang in, in a sense na bilang babae, um, a lot of the stances really highlighted yun. Mga nagiging condition or mga what you're supposed to be as a woman is supposed to be complacent, quiet, don't don't cry don't show anger sad fam right yeah. but then in reality it's like no you you can take up that space and i think i think that's part of you know not fighting those systems because as sabi niya nga there's intersections between the racist system the capitalist system the colonial system and the patriarchal system that continues to be you know strapped down um into the way that we experience the world and and how we feel anger towards the system is valid and we don't need to dismiss it. Oo, sabi niya, cry if you want to. Sige, baka after the show. <laughs> yun, si Jules na susunod na featured. <laughs> At ayun, muli po ako si Ems. Maraming salamat sa pagkikinig. Lagi niyo mga asahan na maghahandog kami ng mga kabulohang musika tula at marami pang iba na nandidiwang ng kulturang Pilipino dito lamang sa Radyo Migrante 105.5 FM Para naman sa ating pulso segment pakinggan natin ang mga saloobin ng mga umatend ng Labor Trafficking in the 21st Century Forum na fina- facilitated by Migrant Resource Center Canada o MRCC noong May 19 Sige, pakinggan po natin Richard Uy, and I'm in Scarborough. My name is Sarah, and I'm with CPSO. My name is uh, Cynthia, and my daughter is um, a part of Anakbayan, Scarborough. Hello, my name is T. Williams, and I'm the chairperson of the St. Jamestown Residence Council. I'm here at the um, North York Library. An event hosted by the Migrants Resource Center uh, about labor trafficking, and I'm here because it's an important issue, and I wanted to make contact with people who are doing this important work. I'm here because I want to be representing my organization, CPSO, and also, yeah, just sit and listen and learn as much as I can. I'm here because I wanted to get more of a better understanding about labor trafficking. I'm learning a lot from the first presentation about how the justice system usually frames labor trafficking, so I just wanted to learn more about why these cases happen and what we can do. Before coming here, what were your expectations? I expected to, you know, be welcomed warmly uh, and to learn about the issues that are facing, like, migrant communities. Learn about uh, human trafficking and how it manifests in Canada. I learned about this organization that they can help migrant people and learn about the labor trafficking, their experiences. I learned a lot sort of about the specific issues that face migrants and also about how vulnerable they are and how easy it is for them to be exploited in the system as it currently exists. I understand a lot better sort of the fear and the uncertainty that migrants face and how that drives them into situations where they are easily uh, taken advantage of by Canadians. How vicious the cycle is for people who are stuck in these like human trafficking situations. It's important that we really learn the details and identify what is a human trafficking situation and like, to look beyond just like the obvious sign. If we're going to achieve justice for migrants or for anyone, we all have to work together and try and form movements that help each other out. Maybe I will um, uh, attend seminars, meetings, 
chance if I have time and be a part of it. It's really about like learning and identifying the nuances of what human trafficking looks like and the situations in which migrants are oftentimes forced into. It would be great in the future if I can like work directly with them one day. At iyan po ang pulso segment sa linggong ito. Maraming salamat sa mga nagbahagi ng kanilang karanasan na umatend noong uh, Labor Trafficking in the 21st Century Forum noong May 19, facilitated by the Migrant Resource Center Canada o MRCC. Patuloy po kayong nakikinig sa Radyo Migrante dito sa Toronto's Best Filipino Community Program, Vibe 105. Huwag kayong aalis mga kababayan, makakasama natin muli ang international student na sina Kuya Javier Hardalesa at Kyra Garcia at pag-uusapan natin tungkol sa kanilang experience bilang mga international students dito sa Canada. Mapapahinggan po natin yan after the break. Alright, ako po ang inyong host, si Jules, sa ating Pinoy Tayo segment o Pinoy Talakayan at Usapan. Dito natin mapakikinggan ang tanang buhay ng ating mga kababayan na migrant workers, international students at iba pa. Halina't pakinggan po natin ang fresh na fresh na perspectives ng ating mga kababayang Pilipino. For today's featured interviews, makakasama natin muli ang dalawang international students na sina Javier Hardalesa at Kyra Garcia para sa part 2 ng kanilang mga interview. Last week, napakinggan natin ang kanilang mga karanasan and what led them to migrate here in Canada. Daga, pakinggan natin kung paano naging madali o mahirap ang process of getting a study pathway program and how strikingly different the promises of Canada versus the struggles on what it truly is like being an international student. Sa kaya ay dalawa ang aking trabaho. Uh, yung isa, uh, every three, every week, nakakonsume ako ng four hours lang naman. Mm -hmm. uh, chess instructor, part-time. Chess, so, chess, chess. Yung um, game? Yung, yeah, the game. Ah, chess okay. game. So, Kasi maliit pa ako, ay naglalaro na talaga ako niyan hanggang ngayon. Kaya, oh, wow. yeah. So sabi ko, kesa ano, uh, dagdag din na income kahit pa paano. So every, mm -hmm. every week, meron akong four hours na okay. iba't ibang eskolahan na pinupuntahan para magturo ng chess uh, sa isang oras lang naman yun. Mm -hmm. Pero kahit sabihin mo na dalawa na rin yung hanap buhay at pinagkakakitaan mo, kulang at kulang pa rin dahil Mataas ang cost of living uh, okay. sa Toronto mm -hmm. in terms of housing rent na lang, for example, uh, yung mga bilihin, etc. And plus the inflation. So, okay. talagang kailangan. So, ngayon, kailangan mong buluin yung ganong uh, uh, environment. Okay. Isa lang ba yung trabaho mo as of right now? Yes, isa pa lang. Kasi I've been looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. And then, honestly, what I think that would be would benefit us international students if there was like more um, mm. opportunities and maybe organizations that promote na mm. oh there's a job for you here ah, or there's a job oh. for or there's opportunities for you to take a part-time job here mm -hmm. kasi sobrang konti lang and then i see that too with my other co-workers oh, okay. that's also looking for other jobs kasi kasi age ko din sila uh -oh. and then they're also students mm -mm. And then, um, even though not everyone in my work is international, but you can see the struggle mm -hmm. na mahirap na maghanap ng trabaho dito. Yes. Even as a part-timer. Mm -hmm. Kasi kung wala kang experience, why would they hire you? Yeah. yeah. Mahirap. Mm -hmm. So, nakadulong ba yung pag-lift ng 20-hour per week work as part-time sa sitwasyon mo dito sa Canada at all? I think it would be helpful if binigyan nila ako extra hours, pero <laughs> <laughs> siguro ako din, nangisip ko din na hindi ko din pa masyadong kaya because of the school load na binibigay, plus may placement pa. I was, nung first time, siguro, siguro mas okay siya because mas maluwag. Pero nung when placement started, it's just very hard. Oh, wow. Especially since yung company ko is also in a budget. So yung part-timers, Marami kami part-timers na binibigyan ng, ng less hours na buti na lang may mga iba kami co-workers na tinatawagan na lang kami if do you wanna take my shift, ganun-ganun. Adi, pag may ganun, adi opportunity na yun na, uy, may extra hours, adi mga ano. Pero ang sad, kasi nahanap ka pa oh. ng ano, diba? Di nila bibigay pa rin sa'yo yung hours uh -oh. na kailangan mo. 
So kahit po pala lifted na yung 20 hours of uh, yung working for 20 hours ng mga international students, parang hindi pa rin po pala sapat, no? Para uh, sustentuhan yung yes, sarili. Yes. Ako ang uh, tinitingnan ko kasi rito dahil dun sa usapin ng inflation. Apo. Uh, ang isang example ko nga dito yung nominal wage. Hmm. Nominal wage is 15, which is according to law, but the real value of that $15 is not 15 anymore because hmm. of inflation. So, meaning nagtataasan yung mga biliin. Apo. Kaya yung $15 na yon ay ano yon number na lang. Pero yung tunay na halaga, uh, nag-devaluate na yung $15 into probably $12. Ano, kahit sabihin mong lifted na yung 20 hours, even you work beyond 40 hours, 45 hours in a week, at may other job ka pa, considering the inflation, uh, wala eh, break even ka lang eh. Uh, minsan, kulang pa nga eh. Oo, so yun. Honestly, ang hirap na din maghanap ng trabaho dito. Like, mm -mm. sasabihin ng mga tao na, Oh, punta ang kaya doon. Dali-dali yung makaharap ng trabaho dyan. Part-timer. Rami-raming trabaho. Raming available dyan. Lahat ng mga tao sasabihin sa yun, di naman nila alam kung gaano kahirap. Kasi mm. they will, syempre, there will be competition. Especially uh -oh. for the people that is actually living here. Uh -oh. So they'll prioritize the citizens and mm -hmm. the residents itself mm -hmm. ra rather than the international students. And I, and that will just, like, that makes things worse for, you know, mm -hmm. the anxiety for the international students. Like, yes. when they... How are we gonna live if we don't have work? And how will we find work that's flexible for our time in school plus placement plus living life here in Canada? So like, nakikita ko yung mga Filipinos dito rin and other people like, wala na silang saya. Yung, yung puro na lang trabaho na trabaho kasi kailangan na lang kumayot. Uh -oh. Parang mas madali na lang tumira sa Pinas <laughs> kasi, kasi mas at least yeah. doon sa Pinas may balance. Dito kailangan mo kumain kasi hindi ka mabubuhay with just minimum wage here mm -hmm. in Toronto. You know? uh -oh. But it's still but it's sad because it's still better mm -hmm. than the way the salary that I had in the Philippines. Uh -oh. At least with the salary that I'm having now as with minimum wage mm -hmm. and as customer service, mm -hmm. I'm able to pay the rent, I'm able to buy groceries, I'm able to live with my friend here alone. Mm -hmm. Under than 12,000 or 14,000 pesos, pesos. Mm. and as a teacher well, I that can rarely get the bill, pay the bills, pay something for me uh -oh. Siyempre, kinukuha pa ng taxes I'm sorry, pero yung, pero yung tax, ang laki-laki na nakukuha Pero saan? Mm. Anong, anong use? Diba? Tapos nananakaw naman eh It's like basically the wage that you have is for survival mode uh -oh. But it's not for living mode. You don't mm -hmm. have time if you keep having like multiple jobs mm -hmm. to pay the bills. You won't have any time for yourself. Or yeah. the reason why you went here is to experience the, mm -hmm. you know, the life here in Toronto. Um, travel, uh, meet new people, go to party, parties, drink, or go to the park. All of those things because you don't have time. Kala ka pera, mahal mahal <laughs> Inflation, you know? Other than the bills, at saka other than uh, the rent that you pay for, paano pa po yung tuition fee na binabayaran ninyo, Kuya? Okay. Sa Kasi pa po ba yun? Okay. Sa mga health insurance? Yes, magandang tanong yan. Ano? Okay. Uh, sa karanasan ko, halimbawa, uh, ano nag-apply ako ng trabaho dito sa Toronto, at bago ako matanggap, may ilang mga pinagawa sa akin. We're talking about the, the, the mm -hmm. health insurance. Okay. May ilang mga laboratories na pinagawa sa akin. Yes. Hindi siya cover ng employer ko na ngayon. Uh, from my own pocket yon. Okay. Hindi rin siya cover ng health insurance ng isang mm -hmm. international student. Oh, wow. Dahil ang nakalagay doon, it's very, very limited. It says that that mm -hmm. insurance is pretty much will cover the, the emergency purposes only. But this one is requirements for employment sa job. Every visit ko sa doktor, I spend $130. Oh, wow. Laboratory plus yung magsasign yung doktor dun sa something like paperwork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nakipag-usap na ako sa employer ko ngayon na and kahit pa paano, naunawaan naman nila na very expensive ka ako every time I visit. So, mm -hmm. sa so, usapin naman ng tuition, I work in the States for six years. Mm -hmm. So, lahat yun. Uh, nakapag-ipon kahit pa paano. And then, meron kaming tinatawag na 
yung 401k, uh, yan yung tinatawag na retirement benefits plan. Okay. If you will retire in the US, pero hindi naman ako nag-retire, kaya nakuha ko siya ng lump sum. Mm. So honestly, yung mga naipon ko doon, including yung sa benefit, yung plan, okay. retirement benefit, lahat ng yon nandito sa Canada at nasa Trishon. And then all my savings na ginawa ko sa US, ay napunta doon sa tuition kasi very expensive yung tuition fees dito sa sa Canada as an international students. Grabe so, no po yan. Yeah. Kaya ngayon kailangan mo pa rin pagtrabahuhan kung may kakulangan man and I'm hoping by September mm -hmm. ay hindi siya tataas. Opo. So as an international student mm -hmm. like um like anong schedule mo? In a week I have school from Monday Mondays to Wednesdays. Thursdays okay. and Fridays I have placement that starts early until in the afternoon mm. and then after that placement is just so hard like it's it's very very hard it i would if i could have if mm -hmm. i could like work paid but on placement no? no it is not paid oh. and i was like i go to work mm -mm. after class it's a good thing that my work is just across so from so me. wednesday ka, like, so i have wednesdays um, until 9 sometimes, 9, 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. and then Tuesdays then kapag, ano, kapag may time then. Mm -hmm. um weekends, mm -hmm. kapag may opportunity then nga kapag work ako, I, I ask for hours. Yes. So I ask for hours or I ask to be switched, but I have to do school works. Mm -hmm. And then ang hirap lang because why, why does the school give so much knowing that that a lot, a lot of their um, students are international students and or have part-time work. There's also hidden mm. payments. Na pagdating namin dito, like, kailangan mo pala bayaran to, kailangan mo pala bayaran to, kailangan mo bayaran to, insurance, blah, blah, blah. Mm -mm. Um, books. Books. Tapos, yes. Um, mga kailangan may print kasi kailangan printed. <laughs> Tapos, basta marami pang kala mga hidden things na kailangan ID. mong bayaran. No, ID. ID. <laughs> May mga hidden things na kailangan mong bayaran na yeah. ang sad because ID yung paycheck ko na pupunta na lang sa bayad for school. Paano na lang yung sarili ko? Mm -hmm. Tsaka paano ko lang sabihin ko yun sa magulang ko na ay, kailangan ko bayaran to sabi na lang, bakit may bayad na naman? Mm -hmm. Ay, sana napupunta yung baon na binibigay ko sa'yo. Ay, sabi ko, sa school. Nabibigay ko sa school kasi kailangan to dito, kailangan to dyan. Mm -hmm. Tapos, syempre, kailangan ko din mabuhay. Kailangan ko ba yung pagkain? Uh -oh. <laughs> so, ang dami yung binabayaran sa school, no? Mm -hmm. So, nagkakasya ba yung sweldo mo with all of these expenses just to survive? Mm, no. It's a good thing. Especially part-time lang ako. So, mm -hmm. if I think full-time mm -hmm. and then I have lots of hours, it would. Mm -hmm. Barely. But, um, I think with the hours that I have and the gastos na mm -hmm. with school and with food and rent, yeah. You know, recreation. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's not really enough. I'm very glad that I have a family that's very supportive back home. That I'm just glad that um, I have a family that pushes me that, to mm -hmm. ask for help. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we should, um, for international students, when, they're plan when they plan to go here, don't hesitate to ask for help or don't be afraid because your family is there because they love you and they sent you here for a reason and they sent you here in knowing that this will happen and yeah. then they're w they are willing to help you That's because they wouldn't send you here if they won't help you you know as an international student here in Toronto what else do you want to see mm -hmm. um I want to see respect oh. for us of course mm -hmm. um so work um I see na medyo you know, iba pa rin tingin sa mga international, internationals, not just students, but internationals there. I work in a place where a lot of people are of color, mm -hmm. but the heads are men. Ooh. So I think, <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> men, but medyo, I don't like how they treat the women there. Oh no. So. How do they treat the women there? They're like babies, you know? Like mm -hmm. they can't move, they can't do anything without the women that's working that's under them. Very and then, surprising. And then, i, tapos, i blame nila lahat dun sa manager ko na babae who was an interna went here and then as an international student. Mm -hmm. Her first work is there. Yeah, respect. 
you know and then I think there's also a stigma when it comes to international students that they can do anything like they can ask all those demands for you because you how you'll do it anyway so I wow. think yeah. like when it like yung kung saan kami na place for placement mm-hmm. um, a lot of us were of a lot of international students were placed very far away other than the people who were already here like residents and the citizens like why bakit bakit sobrang layo or, why is there a difference why is there a difference <laughs> is it just because stinging nila international students so they'll just take anything kasi nga takot kaming magsalita it's a good thing nung pinlace ako sa Pickering nakapag naka, nasabi ko agad kasi I think I demanded yes because I know my rights I mm-hmm. also hope that to see changes in um, looking for opportunities mm-hmm. for international students like when it comes to work because um, you know wala din kami masyadong benefits and opportunities because sobrang hindi we, they look past us you know, because what what qualifications do we have other than get, giving money to this country mm-hmm. with everything that we have? So so yeah, and also the lower tuition fee. Because ang ang tas tas ng tuition fee namin dito. Pero sa na pupunta kung ang professors namin hindi naman competent enough then, because sometimes they also um, they're also racist. Um, they yes. like what Julia said. They only pick the people they want to help, and That's they true. you usually help the people who are the same race as them mm-hmm. or white passing. <laughs> so mga mga ganon na people lang. So pag nakita nila nila may language barrier, di na nila agad tutulungan. Tapos mayroon pang hidden payments like what? About hindi pa ba enough yung tuition fee? Marami rami yun ako na kung pera sa amin. Oh, bakit kailangan separate pa? Hindi ba included? No, so, tas hindi nyo pa kami kailang ano matutulungan. <laughs> Grabe, kaya ka. Maraming salamat sa uh, kwento na binahagi mo dito sa episode na to. Thank you also for having me. It's uh, it's been an honor to talk here in Radmig. I am very humbled because I know that this radio does a lot to spread awareness and information for us people, us Filipinos living here in this country. So I hope that this interview was you know, helpful. Maraming maraming salamat kaya ka sa pag-share uh, o pagbahagi ng iyong kwento sa amin. Mabuhay ka at mabuhay tayo. Mabuhay! Lahat. What changes do you want to see, Kuya? What are your demands? The provincial government should support and provide more funds doon sa mga state colleges and universities. For example, uh, ang eskwelahan, kung nasaan ako ngayon, is considered as uh, uh, community college. Apo. So, community college, so hoping that every year, merong additional funds yan, tumataas dapat, para kung anuman yung kakulangan at kung anuman yung gusto nilang ponduhan. Let's say, gusto nilang mag-hire ng additional worker, additional staff, mm-hmm. hindi kukunin sa tuition ng mga estudyante. Mm-hmm. internationally. Bagkus, ibaba pa nga dapat, may kakayanan ba? Kaya naman. Uh, sabi nga, kung, kung kaya, may paraan. Kung ayaw, may dahilan. Ano? Yeah. Uh, pwede naman siya in terms of support, like fund mm-hmm. support, like the provincial government. As I said, uh, maraming state colleges and universities na dapat ponduhan niya ng, ng marami. Uh, as an example, eh, nakapagbigay nga yung provincial government or even in the city of Toronto mm-hmm. ng budget sa police. in millions of dollars for 2023. Why yes. not? Why not hindi pondo para sa healthcare, sa housing, Nama. sa education. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I say education, it includes even the international students. So, yes. yun, yun. Yun sana yung yung i, ano, i isipin ng gobyerno, uh, it can be a city government or provincial government na increase the funds in terms of education uh, instead of gearing towards privatization. Uh, yun yung unang demand is basically additional funding for state colleges and universities. Pangalawa, yung punto na uh, magpatuloy yung pag-organisa ng mga, yung, yung connection ng mga immigrants, international students na alisin yung kaisipan na masyadong self-centered ano? na para bang pag naging PR na ako at naging citizen na ako ng Canada okay na 
okay na. Ayaw ko, uh, wala na akong pakialam. Basta magtatrabaho ako na magtatrabaho. Canadian citizen ako. Dadalhin ko ang family ko rito sa Canada. But the point is, na-resolve ba yung kahirapan? Hindi. So, kaya nga, ang kailangan natin, let's continue na magpatuloy yung pag-arouse, uh, organize, and mobilize. And let's keep up the ourselves what is happening in our country para uh, makaisa tayo kasi tuloy-tuloy pa rin naman yung pakikibaka, tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung paghahanap ng tunay na demokrasya at kalayaan ng, ng sambayan ng Pilipino. Gabi kuya, nakakakilabot yung mga gusto mong demands na as an international student and as a, as a worker dito sa Canada. Maraming salamat kuya, mabuhay ka. Mabuhay po tayong lahat at uh, patuloy tayong uh, makinig at uh, suportahan ang Radyo Migrante. Ang ganda ng interview mo, Jules, with Kuya Javier at kay Kaira. At kakabasa ko lang dito sa newspaper din na yung bilang din ng mga international students na nagpapakamatay o nagsusuicide dito sa Canada ay tumataas in the past, like in the past year. So, it's a it's an urgent issue, no? It's, a, it's an urgent issue na dapat... Ang, ang pag-usapan na dapat ng solusyonan para hindi mas lumala pa yung, yung kinakaharap ng mga international students. It's not only, you know, mga Filipino communities na naranasan to. Other international students like sa NSN, the Nodger One Support Network, na talagang they advocate for the rights of international students and how they've actually been forced to take on like under the table jobs. I guess in short, sinasabi ko na, like, although the struggles are different, they're connected in different ways kung paano napipilitan ang mga international students to do certain things um, based on their conditions. Oo oh, nga. Ang sabi nga nila, they are already exploited as students dahil sa taas ng tuition fee. And then they are also exploited as workers dahil dyan sa mga kinakaharap nilang uh, exploitation sa trabaho nila. Maraming salamat sa mga input ninyo, Waynes at M. At uh, totoo na maraming uh, struggles ang international students. Alam ko yan kasi nga, international student din ako myself. Gusto ko lang din i-share na mas dadami pa ang mga uh, Filipinos from the Philippines who are taking on study pathway programs uh, to go to go here sa Canada at sa mga iba't iba pang bansa. At marami na ding mga agencies advertisements about it uh, nung nasa Pilipinas pa ako um, like how to how to do this and how to do that and I think that's a little bit worrisome kasi Filipinos would rather go abroad than to than to stay in the Philippines kasi napakahirap ng napakahirap umasento ayun lang something to think about something to to reflect on Ayan, maraming salamat muli sa pakikinig at maraming salamat kay Kuya Javier Hardalesa at Kyra Garcia. Nakikinig kayo dito lamang sa Radyo Migrante ng Vibe 105.5 FM. Maraming salamat, Jules, at syempre to stay updated sa nangyayari sa ating community, ito ang mga events at announcements. Happening today at 2 p.m., let your voices be heard. So join us at the Filipino Community Town Hall with Toronto mayoral candidate Olivia Chow titled Ating Longsod Ating Boto. This town hall meeting will be held at Steelworkers Hall 25 Cecil Street from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Ang venue ay wheelchair accessible and you can RSVP online through www.beat.ly slash atingboto. Uh, sana makasa- makapunta ang ating mga tagapakinig dito sa uh, community town hall. Yes, thank you, Waynes. And on May 31st, the Canadian Association of Defense and Security Industries, CANSEC, will be holding its annual Weapons and Industry Convention. So, in response, the International Leagues of People Struggles, or ILPS, and Concerned Citizens are gathering at the ENY Center sa Ottawa to oppose and protest Canada's arms sale to regimes accused of human rights violations. Ang pangatlong community e- event natin is on Saturday, June 3 at 12 sa Nathan Phillips Square. Ang Justin- Justice for Workers ay mag organisa ng rally. Ang panawagan nila ay enough is enough. They are fighting for better wages, better pay, and better conditions for their work. 
For more information, visit justiceforworkers.org slash forward slash enough on. At sa same day, pumunta tayo sa 9.30 a.m. sa Earlsville Spark. Ang Philippine Independence Day Council, PIDC, ay mag organisa ng annual picnic to commemorate and celebrate the Filipino-Canadian community. Oo, magkita-kita tayo dyan. Mukhang uh, masaya yan. Interesado ba kayo na maging bahagi ng Radyo Migrante? Halina at sumali sa Radyo Migrante Collective. There are open positions for new researchers, scriptwriters, interviewers, co-hosts, editors, and social media coordinators. Message lang kami sa aming Instagram, Facebook, or email. Maghanap nyo kami as Radyo Migrante o Radyo Migrante Toronto. At dito nagtatapos ang isa na namang makabuluhang episode ng Radyo Migrante. O di ba? kakahelo pa lang, mag-goodbye na agad. Nabitin din ba kayo? Sige, ipagpatuloy na lang natin ang ating mga usapan next Sunday, same time, 1 to 2 p.m. Nandyan lang kami. Mukhang naubos na ang mga kape ng ating mong gagawa. Sana po ay naging malinamnam ito kasama sa pakikinig ng Radio Mikan. Maraming salamat at, at kung gusto niyo po magpa-shoutout, message niyo lang po kami sa aming Instagram or Facebook. Maraming salamat ulit na sinumahan mo kami this week. Ito muli si M signing out. Ingat po kayong lahat. Sa tulong ng mga kababayan nating bumubuo ng Radyo Migrante, kila Javier Hardalesa at Kaira Garcia, at higit sa lahat sa inyo pong mga nakikinig sa Radyo Migrante tuwing linggo mula alauna hanggang alas dos ng hapon, maraming maraming salamat po. Ako pala mag outro at para po sa ating huling awitin, pakinggan natin po ulit ang migranting Pilipino ni Carl Ramirez. Hanggang sa susunod mga kababayan, muli mabuhay, mabuhay po kayo, kayo at mabuhay, mabuhay ang bayang Pilipinas! Pilipinas.